This morning, as I shared, as you've already learned, and it's time to go home, the kids already blew the message and gave it to you. Uh, we're going to talk about the gift this, this month. And, you know, that's, that's, whether we admit it or not, that's what's already on everybody's mind. I mean, you've been looking at Christmas stuff since September 1st anyways in Walmart. Uh, you know, everybody starts blowing this all out of proportion. I really appreciate what Rob had to share is that, you know, we need to come back to a realization about what this season is really all about and uh you know i came across a couple of quotes that i wanted to share and i think they're meaningful and one is if you are more fortunate than others build a longer table not a taller barn and uh it, it really talks about if you've been blessed share that blessing with those around you uh, and blessings are always not shiny, blingy things. Sometimes a blessing is just a conversation. Sometimes it's just spending time with somebody. Uh, you know, we can all be thankful for how God has blessed us. Uh, as I was thinking about this time of year and thinking about the greatest gift, most of us in the world, we think of a gift is something that somebody hands to us and we get to open. And I always talk about at this time of the year, we get our, those presents under the tree that have our name on it. Well, even though it has your name on it, until you actually receive it and open it, you don't get to enjoy the gift. And I think there's a lot of people that come to church and they see the gift. And they even see their name on a package, but they just like seeing see in the gift they don't ever unpackage the gift and experience the gift of Jesus Christ and so this passage in Isaiah really helps us to understand who Jesus is and what he came to this earth for uh, boy it just seems like this time of year is tough we go into Thanksgiving and people are told you, you you need to be thankful and all of a sudden mom's not there for the first year or dad's not there or we start focusing on the things we don't have instead of realizing the blessings that we do have. And then we get to the Christmas season, and here, here it goes again. We're thinking about all the things that we don't have and how other people are. People are just going into more debt than you are. That, 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 I mean, that's what we need to realize here in a lot of areas, that people are going to put Christmas gifts on credit cards, and y'all look around like, well, I'd never do that. Yes, you will. You will. And then you'll start getting all these advertisements in January on how to get out of debt. Amen? You been there? I mean, are you okay? So, so we're going to talk about the greatest gift because all of us have had gifts that we've lost and that maybe somebody stole or maybe that we didn't use. How many of y'all bought something you never used It's still in the package? Look at the wives doing this to their husbands right here. Now, wives, I know you've got 10,000 Tupperwares. Are they still doing Tupperware? You know, we got a lady here right now. Yes, see me right after church. I can sell you some. Right, so, so we all have stuff in our houses that we don't use. But yet at one time, that was the thing that we had to have, right? Like how many of y'all got the latest crock pot or whatever, right? Like, what is it, QVC? I don't even watch TV for that type of stuff, right? But you're like, you can't wait for the newest thing to come out. And then you get it and you don't use it. And yet the greatest gift that we have, we get to enjoy every day. If we will just spend time enjoying it. So I want us to look at this passage in Isaiah. My gift to you today is this won't be a long sermon. Oh, I was waiting for that. I mean, I can go on. I can double the sermon if you want. Okay, let's look at Isaiah chapter 9 because this is what we're going to build this series around is the gift. And I really want us to think about some of the gifts that we've received in our lives that are true blessings and really some of the gifts that we've received in our life that we were like, well, thank you, you know, I appreciate that gift, but uh, I don't need it, don't want it, and now i got to act like I like it, because if I don't, you're going to be disappointed. And so I'm going to put a smile on my face and pretend like I like it so that when you leave, I can put it in the bottom drawer of a file cabinet somewhere and never have to look at it again. Y'all ever done that? I can tell by your facial expressions. Many of y'all have gotten gifts like that. Sometimes I think we get that kind of experience when it's like well i'm going to church and you know the music's gonna be good and i'm gonna hear a sermon and 
and then I'm going to start stressing out Sunday afternoon about going to work on Monday because I don't take time to enjoy the gift of God's presence and blessings in my life. Here it is, Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A gift is given for a purpose. Is that true? If you give somebody a gift, be it pecan pie, the keys to a car, uh, whatever it is, you are doing that for a reason. Is that true? Remember, we believe in group participation. Okay? That way I know you're not sleeping, right? So so when we give a gift, it doesn't mean that we want something back. I I don't mean it that way, but it means that we took the time to say, you know what, little Susie would like this little outfit, so I'm going to buy it, and Susie's going to wear it, or whatever. Or Uncle Bob would like this new shotgun, so I'm going to get him the new shotgun, or whatever. So we have a reason and a purpose behind it. God had a reason and a purpose for sending His Son. Because we were sinners that had no hope. And the only way that we could have hope again to be in right relationship with God is for Him to send this gift of His Son, His one and only Son. There was a purpose behind it so that you and I might be in right relationship with God once again what do you do with a gift when it's given to you alright here's here's true confession to top hand how many of y'all shake gifts under the tree I mean, you're supposed to do that as a kid look at these adults yeah I do right you want to know if it rattles if it shakes and all that type of stuff and so, what do we do with a gift when it's given to us? We, we, we open it, right? We, if it's wrapped up, sometimes gifts aren't wrapped up, but, but we're excited, you know, and, and, and we dance around. And now we, now we share that gift with everybody on social media, right? Like, like somebody gets a new car and everybody in the world cares that you got a new car. I didn't get a new car. Why do I care if you got a new car? I go out looking at my drive and there ain't no new vehicle out there. But yet we want to share all that stuff with everybody and show everybody how good life is. Social media is from Satan. I do believe. Because the vast majority of it, really, when you look at it, is about boasting about yourself or your family or your children or anything else. And it's not, I mean, nobody announces their divorce on social media. Nobody goes and says, you know what? Well, okay, maybe some do. I'm looking over here at the team roper section, and I guess they do. That might explain a whole lot, people, okay? But do you understand what I'm saying? You know, with social media, it's like we don't talk about, I had the most awesome quiet time this morning with Jesus. But some people do. But but really, we have taken what Satan, what was meant for good, Satan has turned around on us and, uh, and really tore up the fabric of our families. It's addictive. You're exactly right. It is addictive. I don't know anything that Satan does that's not addictive to y'all. You think of Satan, I think of addiction of any kind. I don't care what it is is because we all are are very hungry for immediate gratification we, we want it now and that's too late we wanted it sooner than now right so so let's look at the prophetic word here the the prophetic word here is, is this is Isaiah right like like we still have many many days to go before Jesus is actually born but we have the word here that says For unto us, it means here it comes, people, a child will be born. And this child is going to be the one that all of the universe, think about it, every knee will bow and every tongue confess what? That Jesus is Lord. So here we are in the Old Testament. We have this prophetic word that a wonderful counselor is coming. You know, I, I can't tell you that, I, I don't know, it's, it's this time of the year, like I said, but, 
I get more emails and phone calls and text messages that basically are, hey, Brother Greg, can we, can we get together for coffee? I, I, need, I need to talk to somebody. I love that. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But it seems like somewhere between the middle of November and the first of the year that all of a sudden we decide to carry more extra baggages than we need to. You ever been there? Sure. We feel like, like I said earlier, maybe it's the first season that somebody significant in our life is not there. And we want to talk to somebody. Why in the world would Scripture say that God sends us a wonderful counselor? What does it mean that a wonderful counselor has been... Y'all ever been to a wonderful counselor? I've been to a guy that I like. I won't tell you what he calls me. But I've... Uh, yes. Uh, but I've also sent church members to this counselor. And I'll tell you up front, you're either going to like this guy or you're going to not like this guy. Because he doesn't pull any punches. And those are the kind of guys I like. He just gets right to the point. Jesus gets right to the point. You know what the point is? Your struggle is sin. That's your struggle. And we don't want to do the right thing because we're afraid of what people are going to think about us. We, we, don't, want to, we don't want to be evangelistic. We don't want to go tell people about Jesus because we're not sure what we believe about Jesus because we don't spend enough time in His Word. Just like I don't go around talking about math. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't even care about it. So why do I want to talk about it, right? But you can relate that to anything in your life, but unfortunately as believers, we're caught short because we're not sure what we understand or believe about Jesus to the point to where we can talk to somebody else about Jesus. Oh, Brother Leo, can you talk about cooking food? You know it, right, brother? Right? Okay? If, if you know something that you know, that you know, that you know, you'll, you'll talk to anybody about it. Is that true? But yet, we, we think that if we can put a window decal in our vehicle, that tells everybody we love Jesus. If we wear a shirt that says something about Jesus, we think that we're telling people about Jesus. You're just telling me that you can afford that shirt is all you're telling me. You're just telling me that you took the time to put a window decal on your... Jesus is not impressed with our outside purchases. He's impressed with our inside relationship. And when that relationship grows, then we are willing to go talk to others around us and help them to know who the wonderful counselor is. Amen? As we look at this, I, I, I find that this gift of Jesus that's given to the world is given for a purpose. We all need somebody to talk to. There's guys and gals talking to God right now in deer blinds all across the state of Texas. Right? You know they are. Some of y'all got family members right now. You say, yeah, Brother Greg was talking about you. Hey, sometimes you just need that right there. Psalm 4610. Why, why do you need to be still and know that He's God? Because to get counsel, you have to be still. Have you ever tried to give counsel to somebody that's always moving? It's like dealing with little children, right? If you're going to get a child to do something, what do you got to say? Give me your eyes. Give me your eyes. Look at me. Hey, give me your eyes. Hey, quit moving. Give me your eyes. Right? Be still and know that he's God. So when we need counseling, when we need to talk to somebody, there's nobody better to talk to because everybody down here is screwed up. Amen? So ain't none of us got it figured out. Ain't none of us got any hope without Jesus. So he is the wonderful counselor. Mighty God, He is our mighty God. I'm glad that I don't have to figure out where I am five times a day to kneel and pray somewhere. I'm glad that I don't have to go confess my sin to somebody that I don't know that's a stranger and I expect them to make things right with my God. That's what Jesus did. I'm glad that I don't have to spend two years on some sort of journey telling others about there's a hope in somebody else besides God. See, He's our mighty God. He does what He says He will do. And He is coming back. I'm going to share something probably at the first of the year that just, just kind of blows my mind. And I'm going to have to introduce this man to, 
over half the church. But this man recorded something back in 1965. His name was Paul Harvey. I know that a lot of y'all don't know who that is. But if you've got any gray hair at all, you've heard about the man Paul Harvey. And it is phenomenally amazing at what he shares if I were the devil. And some of you have heard that. But when you hear that, and you see what's going on in our world today, you're like, oh my goodness. How in the world did he know back then what we would be dealing with today? Scripture tells us that Jesus is going to return. Even the angels do not know when. But my God has done everything this book has ever said that he's done. And so I have no reason to believe that at some point, Jesus is not going to return. It may be tonight. It may be 500 years from now. But if my Bible says get ready, then I need to get ready. Have you ever left somebody that wasn't ready before? Note to self. If Pastor Greg is going on the Montana trip and he says we're leaving, we're leaving. Ain't that right, Tommy? Amen. That's right. All right. I figure everybody knows how to get there, but when this bus leaves, it's leaving. When Jesus says he's showing up, it's too late. If you hear a trumpet one day that you've never heard before, it's too late. I don't like being late. Fifteen minutes early is five minutes late in my book. Okay? I always get everywhere early. If I'm late, there's a problem. Because I don't want to miss anything. And I certainly don't want to miss eternity with my Lord and Savior. He's an everlasting father. And I love Mother's Days and Father's Days. Oh, those are great days for people that have had great fathers and great mothers. But it's also tough when mom beats you most of your life for you to celebrate Mother's Day. When you never knew your father, that's tough when Scripture says that he's an everlasting father. I just want to be honest with you, right? Some of us have a, have a hard time identifying an everlasting father. My father, should, not my father. My father is a good father. He's here today. Dad, I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> but some of us say, you know, my father was never around. Maybe he had a job where he wasn't around, and maybe he was one of the sorriest human beings that ever walked the face of the earth. But our heavenly father is an everlasting father. He doesn't walk out on people. He doesn't leave people high and dry. When, when we talk about being able to talk to our Heavenly Father, it's a relationship that most of us don't understand. Why is that? Because God loved us so much that He sent His Son that we might have hope in an everlasting relationship with Him. So don't base your earthly experience with your Father on what the Scripture says our Heavenly Father is. He's an everlasting Father. Meaning He's not ever going to leave. He's everlasting. will always be there. There is no hug like a Father's hug. And there's no love like a mother's love. But there is no relationship that's greater than a relationship you can have with Jesus Christ. This morning, I want you to know the gift. I want you to be able to pick up the gift, to touch the gift, to hug the gift. Just like that song said, we, who could pick up God? We got, we got a chance to pick up God. And He's picked us up. Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. You ever just had one of those situations to where... There was just no peace at all. I mean, we're talking about throwing stuff at each other, right? Y'all, y'all been in one of them homes before, where you just it's it just it's kind of volatile, and you're like, man, how do I get out of this? Quiet time. You ever been in a situation that you can't get out of? You just wanted some peace. 
See, the reason that the world doesn't have peace is because the people in the world don't have peace. And once you start bringing peace into your life, it's, this, this getting older stuff is so cool. Some of y'all got to get to enjoy it one day. I don't give a rat's tushy about much anymore. I just don't. I want to focus on Jesus. And if I focus on Jesus, it's amazing how much I don't care about anything else that goes on. You know, it, it, it really is. I've had the help of a good wife. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. She's not here today, so I'm going to build her up a whole lot so y'all can tell her about it. But it's amazing when a person of, of, of peace is in your life that looks at the world differently than you do. That's Jesus. You want peace in your life? You need more Jesus. Okay, how do I do that? I've been telling you for years. You've got to hang out with Him alone and you've got to hang out with Him with other believers. Some of y'all are still hanging out some, with some really rotten people. And you know they're rotten. You're related to some of them. But they may not spend eternity with you. They may spend eternity in hell while you're in heaven. Or vice versa. And they may not go to church very often. Now wouldn't that be a kicker? You go to church all your life. And you got a brother or sister don't hardly ever go. They end up in heaven. You spend eternity in hell. Well, you'll be scratching your head for a long time trying to figure that one out. It's about relationship. It's not about religion. It's not about coming to Top Hand every, every week. It really isn't. We'd love to have you come every week. Amen? But it's not about being here. It's about being here with Him. It's about knowing what the gift is all about. And we can't give a gift that we don't have. I would love to give every one of y'all a brand new truck today. I don't have it, so you ain't getting it. I, but I would do it. If it was mine to give, I would do it. Because I just would want you to have And it would be paid for. I wouldn't give you one with payments, okay? That, that's not the kind of gift any of us want, right? But, but I can't give you something that I don't have, but what I can give you is Jesus, because I know I got Jesus. Okay, so, so what I'm saying is you can't give a co-worker Jesus if you're not sure about how to have a quiet time. You can't give a co-worker Jesus if you aren't spending time in the Word. If you don't know Jesus, you can't give Jesus. So why is the world in the shape that it's in? Because there's not enough people that are living and walking with Jesus that know how to be able to give Him to somebody else. We're giving all kinds of gifts. Some of y'all are done Christmas shopping, and you've wasted a lot of money. Because what that child needs is Jesus. It don't need another electronic nothing. What it needs is a pooper scooper out in the backyard picking up after them dogs you got them that nobody cares about except mama that has to feed them all the time. Can I hear an amen? All right. See, you, you, see, you know what I'm talking about. But yet we think precious needs something new because all the other precious is at school going to get something new. What they need is a work ethic that this country doesn't have anymore. And that comes from knowing good from evil, right from wrong, knowing Jesus, and walking with Him. So you want to give a gift to somebody this, this season? Give them what you've got right here. Oh, Greg, I don't have enough of Jesus to give. Well, then get some before December 25th. Amen? Before your family gets together, you need to be able to share something from here and here with those you're going to gather with. And I promise you, it will be more meaningful to them than anything you'll purchase them. Now, they may not say that immediately, but I promise you, if you give them Jesus, you will have given them the greatest gift they could ever receive. This morning as we uh, start this season of the gift, and, and I share more about this great gift that has come down to earth, I really want to challenge you. This, this is a high-stress time. I, I know my family is no different than your family, but well, what's, the, what's the budget this year, right? How many of y'all done that? Okay, we're not going to spend more than $20 on each kid, right? I mean, we, we've all been there. And some of y'all, we ain't going to spend more than 2000 on each kid. You need to come see me after church, all right? 
because I want to be adopted. <laughs> all right? but, but, but all of us go through that, right? We're, we're like, okay, we, we only got this so much money, and, and now, well, well, you know, well, I guess we can go borrow some money. Don't borrow money for Christmas presents. It's not worth it. You've got a free gift that you can give them. And if you don't have a Bible, I will buy you a Bible right after church today. You come up to me, I'm driving, well, Mardell's are closed on Sunday, aren't they? I will get you a Bible first thing tomorrow, all right? If you don't have a Bible. Because the more you know this, the more this grows closer to Him so that you can give Him to those around you. That's what He wants. He wants you to give more of Him to those around you. This morning, I want you to stand. We're going to close in prayer. I want you, just as we think about ending the service, that this really could be the beginning of a great Christmas season as you understand that God sent His Son just for you. If you were standing in this building all by yourself, Jesus came just for you. So this morning, are you, are you ready to receive that gift? See, we're all ready Christmas Day, right? Pajamas and, you know, kids get up early, all that stuff, because everybody's excited. Why don't we come to church that excited about receiving the gift of God each Sunday? We've got it flipped upside down. I want to pray that we'll get it right side up. Amen? Pray with me. Father, we... We do understand that you are the greatest gift. And Father, we confess that we use and abuse and tuck gifts away that we don't ever care about. But Lord, how could we not care about a relationship with you? Lord, help us right now to just truly open our hearts up to you, Father, and know that you have done all that you can do. You've given the greatest gift in your Son, Jesus Christ. So Father, I pray if there's anyone here today that has not received that gift personally, has not invited your Son into their life for the forgiveness of their sins, that, but Father, they would do that today, that this would set the tone for this Christmas season for each and every individual here. Father, I pray your blessings over every home that's represented. May we truly say that this Christmas season, that our family was blessed because we drew closer to you then we grew to those physical presents that will be passed out. Father, help us today to live lives that are pleasing to you so that we can give the greatest gift ever given to those around us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.